Hey, welcome back to the channel. We are in Kanagawa Ishikawa, which is home to this museum right here, the National Crafts Museum. They have an exhibit, a Pokemon exhibit, where they take their famous craft or artwork and create Pokemon related items. So we're gonna check that out. It looks awesome. As you can see behind us, there's a Jolteon made of a lot of copper electric yes. thunderbolts. Also, it's a limited time. It's only for three months. It's from March 21st to June, June 11th. 11th. That's what the sign behind us says anyway. It's quite uh, an interesting and a unique exhibit. Usually she doesn't want to go to these things, but she told me we have to go. So we went two hours, actually we went five hours on the train to get here. Yeah. So hopefully this is worth it. Yeah, we're gonna go inside and check it out. No filming though, so a lot of photos for you. Or maybe some uh, sly video. Oh, I have my microphone right in front of me. Uh, oddly enough, it doesn't have a stand. I need to buy a new one, but we're gonna hold it for us today and we're gonna talk to you about this museum. I'm really excited to create this video for you. The craftsmanship is absolutely stunning and beautiful. So much so that if you're planning to come to Japan in the next few months before June 11, please try and find your way to Kanazawa. You will absolutely not be disappointed, especially if you're a Pokemon fan. There is even this amazing Pokemon Center here as well. I'll link that video above as well as in the description below. Now, for those of you who don't know, Kanazawa is known as the city of Koge. Koge means crafts in Japanese. And Koge is also the name of the exhibit that we're going to today, as you can see on my t-shirt right here. See that? Now this exhibit existing in this city makes perfect sense. There are dozens of traditional art forms in shops, galleries, and museums all over the city, ranging from elegant gold leaf and lacquering, brilliant dyeing and embroidery techniques, to masterful pottery, all of which will be seen infused with Pokemon today. For this exhibition, 20 leading artists of contemporary Japanese koge, ranging from living national treasures to up-and-coming talents, have realized works on the theme of Pokemon in a wide variety of materials and techniques. Try to see the story that they are trying to convey while you watch this video and comment below your favorite works. The city itself is also very reminiscent of an old Japanese town. From the castles to the beautiful designs of the architecture and buildings, there really is a feeling that you are walking through an anime or an old storybook. It's also famous for gold and even has this edible gold you can eat on ice cream, which we didn't try, but I do think it's something you should try for yourself. Now, all of this background info is fun, but let's get right into the museum itself. So, we were not able to reserve tickets in advance due to the fact that we decided to arrive very last minute, so we had to wait in this line right here. But no worries, after paying the 900 yen to get in, we were able to obtain these cool tickets that foreshadow what we will be expecting to see. Since I don't want to spoil everything in the museum for those of you that would like to go, I will show you my favorite pieces of work in my opinion. Also, if you would like to know the artist's name, I will include that in the bottom left. So, Let's get started with this set of Eevee's Original Evolutions. Yoshida Taichiro is a specialist in creating crafts with copper, and every single part of these Pokemon are made of copper. Here, the color and the gloss of pure copper is showcased to the fullest in Eevee. Further chemical changes were used to produce bronze for Vaporeon, gold and silver for Jolteon, and a traditional scarlet platina called Hido for Flareon. The black used for the ears and other parts is also due to the sulfurization of copper. And check out the details of how each evolution is created. Jolteon is made of electric bolts, flareon of fire, and vaporeon of fluid looking ripples of water. And the amazing part is he made each have its own personality or demeanor. Check out how calm vaporeon looks, like water, or how angry flareon looks, like he's burning with fury. Personally, it blows my mind that it's all made of one material. Amazing work, honestly. Next up, we have this really intricate ceramic ball created by Hayama Yuki. But the reason I love this artwork is the details. If you zoom in or take a closer look, you can see over 500 Pokemon within the ball. Can you find Raichu? Or maybe your favorite Pokemon? And additionally, they also created this ball which symbolizes the clash of Groudon and Kyogre, 
While Rayquaza quells their fury, can you see all three of them? We move on to one of Zizi's favorite work. This here is inlaid woodwork, or mokuzogan in Japanese, which involves hand cutting wood and inlaying it. Created by Fukuda Toru, this piece called After Rain has parts patterned with feathers of beautifly that are carved with slightly different curvatures according to the position where they are to be fitted. Infusing the thin and delicate piece with a supple sense of vitality. It looks absolutely amazing and check out the shadow that is formed by the sculpture. It's so cool! He also created this Ho-Oh model that is stunningly colored with this rainbow trailing the wings of the Ho-Oh. Mind blowing honestly. But from the air we move to the water as we see a sculpture of Gyarados. The thing that is special about this model is that Matsuta Haruo creates items that are able to move. This here is an articulating metal figure. In addition to being highly realistic, they are distinctive in their parts can be moved freely. Just like actual animals' bodies, this form of creation is very rare nowadays but it is awesome to see his vision come to life, especially in the Beedrill and the Butterfree. From metal to clay, we move to the work of Imai Sadamasa and probably some of the ones you might have seen before. Just check out how cool these crafts look and imagine it all being done by hand. I cannot imagine the amount of time it took for him to create all those ridges and bumps on Venusaur. That Magikarp looks so slippery and the Kingler had some depth to its scales. And well, this Squirtle reminds me of a Ninja Turtle, but the crazy thing is he really put a lot of thought of how he was going to create these. This Arbok for example, Imai used only the black Tamagusuri glaze and he used this over and over again about 5 times. He simply stated that if you used it one time, it would look like a normal play toy, but if you apply glaze over and over, touch it up, fire it again and again, Gradually, a depth develops, and the assumption was that Arbok would have scales. Not just the pattern on its belly, which would frighten enemies, but the back too. All of this went into his mind while he was creating these items, and it's really amazing to see what the result is. This next exhibit by Hayashi Shigeki, I thought it was interesting as well, and very different. The story behind it is essentially this suit called Moonlight is the first of the playfulness that Hayashi directed at the Pokemon world. Upon seeing this special suit, Pokemon trainers are free to imagine themselves wearing it and their worlds of imagination should open up, one for every viewer who stands before this pure white glow. What do you think? Do you see yourself in there? This next exhibit is to represent a Pokemon move created by Nimi Hiroki. Comment down below if you're able to figure out which move it should be. Here's a few hints. It's an ice move and the details are the user attacks by crashing large icicles onto the target. This may also make the target flinch. Um, I think I've said too much, but if you do know, comment down below. Moving forward, we see some of the coolest vases I've ever seen. The story behind these is one of playing Pokemon and winning the Elite Four by Ikimoto Kazumi. The setting of this work is the Galar region and the Pokemon Trainer Boy and his partners, the Pokemon Ikemoto selected while playing, have all sorts of adventures while traveling from Postwick to Windon. The three-dimensional picture scroll Ikemoto creates includes landmarks deeply familiar to Pokemon fans. The rich colors celebrate memories of the journey and truly, they stand out. And he only used eight total colors, which is mind-boggling. From 8 colors, we move on to 5 colors, as this Alola region inspired kimono really stands out. The cool part is the second kimono. The design is exactly the same as the first one, but Shiroma Eiichi dyed the kimono after placing a stencil on top of it, a blue dye as you can see, and once he released it, the white outline of the characters appears as if they were illuminated by moonlight. Now before we get to my three most favorite works, I want to just give a quick glance at some of these awesome works as well. We have the beautiful Mareep family kimono, full of Flaffy, Mareep, and Ampharos, and even Mega Ampharos, all delicately placed within. An unknown block created by a laser cutter. Honestly, it is exactly what one would imagine seeing the unknown ruins from the video game. You can even see this Squirtle and Mewtwo in these as well. A forest of lace Pikachus, all carefully cut and designed with its own pose. 
interactive enough to walk through. It really honestly felt like a forest of Pikachus and some beautiful lacquer boxes that pose some of the most elegant Pokemon on them. You have some special Pikachu cups, which are very cute, and an embroidered design of Gengars, although they look like haunters to me. What do you think? Do you see Gengar? And there's also these awesome Umbreon shaped metal fittings. Truly look really cool. I would buy these if they had them for sale. But it's time to get to my ultimate favorites. Starting with this guy, Rookidy. Rookidy is not one of my favorite Pokemon honestly and I didn't expect to really enjoy this one but just wait and see this gets really cool. Here, two Pokemon, Rookidy and Corviknight are coexisting on one transformable ornament. That's right, similar to a transformer, it can change from a really cool rickety model into that of its final form, Corviknight. I mean, check out all the work that the creator Tsubishima Yuki had to plan out in order to create something so seamless. It honestly is one of the most impressive things I have seen in this museum today. If they could sell that item, I bet it would be really popular. Moving from something small and neat to something uh, odd and rather interesting, we have some ceramic work with um, a hilarious twist to it. I'll use this quote, to disrupt the master-servant relationship between vessels and their decoration. This is a theme that Masumoto Keiko has been pursuing for many years. In this energetic and humorous works in the current exhibit, Pokemon appear to jump from the vessels or cut out the forms of vessels. For the pottery work, she decided on fire type Pokemon to resemble the, and showcase the warmth of the kiln that is utilized to create such works. I mean, look at how awesome these look. Charizard is one with the vase. My favorite of them is this Vulpix. It looks so adorably fat here. And all the fire Pokemon are so well detailed and I'm sure a lot of you will enjoy this but they also created these ceramic pieces as well. These ones, which are painted with cobalt pigment, really showcase just how beautiful the objects can look and their respective Pokemon that are intertwined in each piece. My personal favorite is this Milsuri. Just looks so cute. And the Piplups here did make me have a good laugh too. Artwork that is also funny, it's a beautiful thing. That leaves us with the final crafts that really blew my mind. Before I get to that, remember to leave a big like on this video to show that you got this far and uh, well, let me show you this. The impression made by Ueba Kasumi's work is defined first and foremost by the overwhelming impact of the pattern. The Pokemon she chose as motifs for this exhibition are all bedecked with patterns in a variety of colors and shapes and appear as radiant presences. It is said that Grookey uses its special stick like a musical tool to beat a rhythmic sound, which then causes the plants to grow. You can see within Grookey itself is a pattern that represents the life of a vine growing and extending forever, a rather exquisite collaboration. It is these patterns within the Grookey, Scorbunny, and Sobble that really showcase the true beauty of the artist and the viewer for that matter. A beautiful body for a beautiful pattern. The balance of head and body is calculated so it just manages to stand on its own as an object as it is also a vase. The colors pop and the Pokemon are adorable, each showcasing an emotion that we would generally associate with them. Check this Sobble, it feels like it's emotionally sad. And this Groudon is fierce and golden, powerful. But my one real favorite is the Shaman, a beautiful combination of colors and design. And check out this cute one. It's upside down and probably the most adorable thing I've seen. I need this one for my apartment. It's honestly, I stayed here at this section for a really long time. But yeah, that's the video for today. There's a shop for gift items and such and also Oh, well, actually, I think I was able to film live, so uh, let me take you there now. In the gift shop, they have these bags. We got magnets up here. Keychains right here. So really, this was really nice. Postcards right here. T-shirts right here, looking nice. Look at this. That looks sick. Here's a white one, just if you wanted to see it. 
All right, that was Yay, the exhibit. Was amazing. Oh, that was really cool. I yes. really, really loved a lot of the stuff yeah, there. Yeah, I even want to buy them. Well, we couldn't works. buy the stuff. We're not rich enough. <laughs> but my favorites were the Sabo, Score Bunny, and Grookey with um, the Shaman. Those items were super awesome. They looked amazing. What was your favorite? I think I like the EVs too. The EVs, the copper EV? Yeah. Those were nice. They were so detailed. If you look yeah. inside, you could see the lightning bolts, the water, the fire, and also their animated expressions. It's definitely a recommendation if you are here right now in Japan. It's three only months. for three months. Oh, so if you're in months. Japan or coming to try to visit Japan, come to Kanagawa yeah. because uh, it's only two hours maybe from Tokyo. I'm not entirely sure. I could be wrong about that. Osaka is two hours. Osaka is two hours. So maybe it's four hours from Tokyo. But either way, you should come out here because it's really nice and the cherry blossoms are blooming. So. Check it out. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it wasn't too long and long-winded if you're here. Thank you. Thank you. And if you're enjoying these type of things and content, subscribe. Also, it's $9. Oh, uh, yeah, it is $9. And subscribe.